Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to showcase how we can move our Spring Boot API inside a Docker container. And a few weeks ago, I created a very simple setup, which I'll just showcase. So this is a very simple REST API, which have a single endpoint, slash user, and we can then pass a request parameter containing an ID to get any user from this endpoint. And let me just showcase using Postman that we have now because we ran on Spring Boot and it hasn't defined any other port numbers, which is going to be localhost 8080 slash user request parameter ID equals one. We now get IDA and then hard coded a few simple people list it up. So this is just from it, not from a database. It's just directly from inside our spring code. But just to showcase the simple setup, we have our ID two, we can do four, we'll get another person. And I think if we do something like seven, it's going to be more than we have. So it's just going to be returning nothing. So this is the very simple Spring Boot API I have created. And I will leave a link in the description if you want to have a look at how this works, where we go through all the files and all the setup. But for now, we just know we have a very simple working Spring Boot application. So then actually move this inside a doc container. I'm not going to be moving everything. I would then manually here compile using Maven. So you can either use the terminal, or in this case, I'm just going to be using the Maven interface built into IntelliJ. So I'd first clean my project, which more or less just removes if we have an already pre-built version of the application, which might be outdated or old or something. So I just clean, which removes the target folder, but we then install, which then compiles the project, creates a target folder, and more precisely, create a JAR file. And this is then this jar file that we're going to be moving into our Docker file and going to be running inside our container. So let me just showcase. We now have a target folder. Inside this target folder, we now have a Spring API and some version jar file. And just to showcase quickly how we actually got this name, it's inside our POM XML. We can see here we have an artifact ID and a version. And the name of our jar file is going to be our artifact ID dash our version, as you can see here. And we could now technically manually run this file using, I think something like Java dash jar and then this jar file. We could then actually run this application through this jar file, but we are going to be using it with Docker. So I'm not going to be doing it manually. I then have this Docker, very, very simple Docker setup where we're building from open JDK 17. So we're going to be running inside an Alpine environment where Java 17 is already set up. I then define that my jar file is going to be the file inside my target folder where it ends with .jar. So any file name .jar. I'm then going to be copying from current position into my target folder and then precisely my jar file. And I'm going to keep copying it to the main point of this app. And I'm going to call it app.jar. And when we then start our Docker container from our image, it's going to be running our entry point. So we're going to be running Java, that's jar, and pointing to our jar file. And we will then have a project running inside our Docker environment, exposing in this case, because we haven't defined anything else in our, we could define inside our resources application properties. Here we could define another port, but now we're just going to be exposing port 8080 inside the container. And I will then showcase how we can take this port from inside the container and port forward to a local host port so we can actually access it. So I would now have Docker running on my application. So first let's do Docker images to just showcase. I do not have any images built already. I would then say I'm inside my Spring API folder. And just to check in here, do we have my Docker file? We do. So now I can just very simply do Docker build. That's G to give a tag, a name of what we want to call it. So I'm just going to call it Spring API. And we're going to building it from the current position because the current position is where we have our Docker file. This is then going to be building. So it's going to be gathering an OpenJDK 7 JDK Alpine environment. It's then going to be defining that our jar file is going to be any file inside the target the jar. We're going to copy this into our target folder, it's going to be a manual setup based on the JDK setup. And when we then show it, so now we could do Docker images again, 
we now have this Sprint API image. And I will then very simply just do Docker, run. I'm going to port forward. So I will take my port from inside my Docker container, which you know is 8080. And I will then port forward it because the right side is from the container. So port 8000. Just to showcase it's actually port forwarding and then we're not just running the application again. So Docker run port. 8080 from the container to port 8000 locally. And what we're going to run, we're going to run Spring API. And this should now be relatively quick to start running. And we can actually see, because we didn't define anything that's going to be running in the background, we actually also get the output from Spring here in our current terminal, because it's kind of like sending information just to showcase what's going on. If we now go back into our Postman setup, and again, try running, for example, on ID7. We now get, I could not send a request because our application is not running on port 8080 anymore. It is now running on port 8000. So if I change it to port 8000, we now get nothing, which is correct for ID7. But if we go back to ID1, we now get ID once again. So just actually to showcase again that it actually works, we can do Docker container ls and we can now see here that we have a running docker container based on our spring api image and it ran this command to start up it was created about a minute ago which matches and that we are port forwarding to localhost port 8000 from port 8080 using tcp inside our docker container so now if you wanted to shut it down in here, because this is actually not a terminal, it's just an output from our Docker container. I can't do Control C, for example. It won't do anything, it won't close. So I would have to manually, in here, I can do Docker, remove, and then I need to do dash false, because it's a running environment, and then my container ID. So now I am removing this container, and you can see in here, we got our access back to use in this terminal. Let's say we want to do it like this again, but we don't actually want it to overtake our terminal. We can then also, instead of doing just port forward, we can do dash D, which also defines that this running Docker container is going to be running in dormant mode, so running in the background. So now, once again, I can start my Docker container. We now just get the, the long, there's a long and a short ID of what has been run. So we now can once again check that it still works in here. And in DOS, and we can check in here, or we can check anywhere because now it hasn't taken over our container. That once again we have a container running, showcasing our information on localhost port 8000 from port 8080 inside our Docker container. So, if you enjoyed this quick and relatively simple setup showcasing how we can start our Spring Boot API inside a Docker container, please leave a like and subscribe. And I wish you all a wonderful day.